Why should you never call out a narcissist? Because you've seen narcissism, you've heard it, you've been watching my social media, you've been watching other social media, and you're like, hey, I'm getting a good picture of this. And my partner, he is a narcissist. You know, like my husband, he fits this to a T. Like I've watched your video on like the nine diagnostic traits. Like I know my husband is a narcissist. Okay. Now, obviously, we're not on this platform to diagnose. That's not what I do. But if it walks like a duck, if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it swims like a duck, and it poops like a duck, and it eats like a duck, it might just be a duck. So before everybody gets their ducks out of line, I need you to understand we're not here to diagnose, but we're saying, hey, take a look at the symptoms. If the symptoms seem to be what's going on, maybe this is happening. And at the end of the day, just to put a pin in it, the label doesn't matter. What matters is you're being with someone who's toxic and abusive, and what world does that seem like it's a good idea? I'm not saying that to put you down or belittle you, I'm saying that to help you wake up, that if you're waiting for the label, the label doesn't matter as much as your reality of coming to conclusion that this guy is toxic for you. That's it. So why is it a bad idea to call a narcissist a narcissist? You're gonna have this piece that wants to call him a narcissist and wants to help educate him, one, because you care. Like you care because you're in this relationship. You've been married for so many years and you're like, hey, I want him to get the help. Now, sometimes this slides over into you becoming a savior. You saving him, you fixing him, you making it all better. And so you get to this piece where you almost have this like savior complex of like, I know if I can make him better, then we can have a good relationship. And it becomes on you. You feel like it's on you. If I do this, he'll get better. If I can make him aware, he'll get better. And you need to understand that regardless of what level of, of communication you have with him, what level of interaction, what level you can push him to do what you want him to do, it has to come from him. Like he's not going to change and transform permanently for you. He's not going to change and transform permanently for you. Because your worth doesn't matter to him. Your value is not big enough for him. There's no motivation from you that's going to make him transform. Because as soon as you have an argument, as soon as you piss him off, as soon as you bring him to a place where he's called out too much and he can't handle anymore, he will revert back. Because true transformation cannot be based on on anyone else. Side note, your healing can't just be for your kids. Can't just be for you to have a better life. It has to be for you. If you base your healing off of him, off of your kids, off of anyone else, it will not work. Because as soon as one of those things get upset, your commitment to you falls away. You no longer show up committed to yourself because it got hard. The narcissist isn't gonna to continue to transform for you. So why is it a bad idea to tell them? Because it'd be like, well, if I let them know, then we can get this figured out. Okay. So you understand you need to be a leader and not a savior. Okay. This is the first point. You need to be a leader and not a savior. That means you're not in the business of saving him. You're in the business of leading yourself and he will either rise up with you or he will fall away. That is the price of him not being willing to rise up in truth, honesty, and how he's actually showing up in the relationship. You need to be a leader and not a savior. Now, when we talk about show, showing a narcissist, hey, you're a narcissist, you need to understand, there's this first level of if he's not willing to be honest and actually reflect enough to see different things that he's doing, narcissism is off the table. Consider it for a moment. I'm gonna try to do an extreme example and hopefully this will make sense. Consider you are a doctor and you have a patient with a life-threatening disease. And the patient doesn't want any help with it, doesn't want any communication with it, and won't acknowledge that it's there. And you go in and there is this hangnail that the patient has on their toe. And you're like, hey, let me fix this for you. And the patient is unwilling to acknowledge that it's there or let you help with it. How are you going to have the deep conversations about the life-threatening disease if they won't let you have the conversation about a hangnail. 
It's a drastic example, but I want you to understand, how are you going to have this conversation about him having narcissistic personality disorder, which is stigmatized everywhere as being the end-all, be-all, and once you have it, you're dead on arrival. How are you going to convince him that he has this like life-threatening, self-debilitating, like forever disease when he won't actually acknowledge anything about the truth of his current life and his current situation? Like, if you're getting this, I need you to type in the chat. I get it. Because some of this concept needs to get through, and you might be the person that needs to hear it. Maybe it's someone else in here. I don't know. You cannot convince a narcissist that he's a narcissist if he's unwilling to deal with basic truth. I was on the phone the other day talking to a couple. I do couples counseling, and then it's a lot of times individually. It doesn't go long-term couples because... Frankly, the majority of couples that see me need individual support before they can actually come back together. But I was doing a call and it's always interesting because I'll have one share, then one share, one share, one share, the back and forth, right? And so I have one person share and she's like, hey, it's really hard because I don't trust him because of X, Y, and Z. And then I'm like, hey, like, what, what did you hear from this? And he's like, well, X, I was, that, that was something I was going to do, but then life got busy and I never got around to it. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he started, he started going off this whole tangent about X. And I'm like, wait a second. She said that you didn't do X. Did you tell her that you were going to do X? Well, yeah, but that was a long, I'm like, whoa, whoa. Did you tell her that you were going to do the X? And he was like, yes. I was like, okay. Now, did you do X? And he's like, whoa, 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 because of this, because of that. And I'm like, no, no, no. Did you do X? Well, I would have, but because, no. Like, and you understand, I just asked you a simple question. It's a yes or no answer. Did you do X? It's amazing how many times a narcissist will try to fight me on this. Some people are like, well, that's black and white thinking. No, it's dealing with the facts. And the problem is some of you are too used to dealing with emotions. You're not used to dealing with the facts. That's what I push people to. And so you'll have a narcissist that's like, oh, well, I, 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 I and like make up all these stories. When in reality... He said he was going to do X. He didn't do X. So therefore, you're either not a man of your word or you're a liar. But stop selling me stories about your current reality that don't match up to the facts that you simply didn't do what you said you were going to do. Do you see this? So when we're having a conversation and you're trying to convince him that he has narcissistic personality disorder, but he's not willing to even be honest about something that happened five years ago, like how do you think this is gonna play out? I'm not saying this to be mean, I'm saying this to try to wake you up because you're focused so much on the toxic person, you're not ready to heal. You're not ready to move forward. You're not ready for you to actually grow because you're afraid, can I actually grow without him in my life? The answer is yes, you can. You're the only person that can actually grow right now. Why? Because right now you're the only one watching this video. You, he's not. He's not working on himself. He might be selling you lies. He might be telling you a different reality, but he's not working on himself. That's the problem. That's why you're here. That's why you've been watching my content. That's why you've been interacting on lives. That's why you've been going back and forth in different comments, like just understanding, drinking from the fire hose of narcissism. You're like, holy cow, I didn't realize that all this stuff was out there. Now I do. So the, the, the whole aspect, first thing I mentioned, you need to be a leader of yourself and not a savior of him. The other piece is a narcissist can't understand he's a narcissist if he's not willing to be honest with basic stuff. If he can't see how he's showing up as a liar, it's not, nothing's going to change. The third thing that I would mention when we're talking about not calling a narcissist a narcissist is understand that typically it'll flip on you and the manipulation will get subtle, more subtle, and oftentimes greater at the same time. Now, what I mean by that is you'll call the narcissist a narcissist and typically he'll come back maybe a day later, maybe a week later, maybe a month later, and you'll find it slipped into his vocabulary that you're the narcissist. Oftentimes it's because the toxic person, he knows that he's toxic. He knows that he's a narcissist. He knows different levels of it, but he can't take that. He's not willing to be honest with it. So he has to project it back onto you. You're the closest person. So the easiest person to reflect onto. That's why it happens. That's why he puts it back on you because he can't deal with it himself because he's unwilling to reflect, unwilling to be honest, unwilling to deal with it. So it gets compartmentalized, desensitized, moved to the side so he doesn't have to be honest 
about who he actually is. This is the hard part. Because you just want him to get it. But it's not on you. You think it's on you because you've been babying him for a long period of time. You've been educating on him, uh, educating him of how to live in society. You've been telling him how to morally treat you. You've been telling him what works and doesn't work. You've been you've been doing all these different things to try to help him, but it hasn't really changed your reality. You believe it, and you try to try to imagine that it's different. But the problem is, you're still here. You're still stuck, and you still aren't liberated from a toxic person. Instead, you've latched onto the fact that you can't fail in this like fix-up project that you have with this guy. And as a result, you're going to stick it out to the very end, even if it kills you. The problem is how long you're going to wait before it's too late. Before you're reduced to a shell of your current person. Before you no longer know who you are. Before you're disconnected so much from your kids that your kids are rejecting you because you won't get the toxic guy out of your life. This is real. Be careful about calling a narcissist a narcissist. They'll become more educated. They'll throw it back on you. They'll play the victim so you can try to continue to save them. And as a result, you'll lose yourself because you won't lead yourself. You'll just pour everything into another person. Narcissists can't understand and can't, un- can't work through the shit that's inside if they're unwilling to be honest. And if you're dealing with a guy today that's a liar, you have no relationship. If you're ready to actually heal and work on you, leading yourself, then go to rawmotivations.com slash breakthrough. I want to give you the tools to break free and to move forward in your healing, in your growth, and in your development. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day.